Support for Serial comes from Squarespace. As a longtime podcast sponsor, Squarespace has shaped the way people up, listen to stories. And then but as a company that helps people make websites, we it's shaped today. the way they tell their own stories. Till then, Try Squarespace today at squarespace.com slash serial and use code serial to redeem a special offer. Squarespace. Support for serial comes from MailChimp. From MailChimp. Mail. Came. Chimp. More than 10 million businesses around the world use a MailChimp to send emails, newsletters, and deliver high fives. MailChimp, send better email. Very nice. I use MailChimp. You do. I love it. First plan was go from point A to point B. That was it. Previously on Serial. OP Mast is probably the worst place humanly imaginable. <laughs> that place sucks. Then you had the little bucket everyone shit in then he was in the town asking if people spoke english i'd rather be sitting in leavenworth than standing over the body of nacio mento or co or somebody like that far notice in a coochie tent kicking indoors one minute freaking cow has a baby this is our mission he's one of our guys we gotta find him we're gonna do it if we would have found him i think a lot of us would have shot him yeah yeah i still i'm still i think i'm still angry about it Before Mark started asking Bo what happened, why'd he walk away from his platoon, Bo had already talked about it to General Kenneth Dahl. Dahl was in charge of investigating what Bo did and writing up a report for the Army. His inquiry was confined to the period that led up to Bo's decision to leave, not Bo's time with the Taliban or anything, just why'd he walk. Mark asked Bo about the statement he gave General Dahl. How long is your statement? Uh, 300 and some pages. Shut up. It's 300 pages? Uh, 300 plus, like, like 380 some pages. Are you fucking serious, dude? I'm serious. Your statement is 380 pages? Yeah. Why? What did you do? Tell them every fucking meal you had when you were deployed? <laughs> no, I just told them key points and... Hello there, King Dino 3. I don't know. It's just, that was the... Pages later, I came to the point where the Taliban picked me up. At a military hearing, Dahl said he and Bo spoke over the course of a day and a half. Quote, and frankly, at the end of that, I had no more questions to ask him, and he had no more story to tell me. So we exhausted each other, and we were done. Unquote. He wanted to, it wasn't just like, <laughs> you're giving Is it time to vote yet? Or should we give a couple more minutes? Or whatever. He wanted to understand who I was as a person. You know, nobody knew who I was because I was so quiet. Oh, okay. When, All right, well, I didn't understand no, that. I thought it was just about the deployment. No, no, you will Like, basically, in the very beginning, he said, all right, this is your chance to tell a story. Oh, so no. I said, well, sir, in order for me to explain to you what happened, I need to no. go back and explain to you where it began. I said, is it time to vote? From This American Life and WBEZ Chicago, it's serious. It is J3. Hello, Gaz. And fear not, I am not going to take you through every one of those 380-some pages. Tonight we're voting on what we play. in the next two episodes, we are going to zoom back in so you can understand what Dahl and Mark and I came to understand about Bo. Whether he told the truth about what he did and whether there's truth in what he told. Because those are two different questions. Oh... Gaz, the terrible One person. of the things that's interesting to me I thought about it was Lance is the terrible person. Is that he broke this cardinal rule of the military. He left his unit, walked away from his post. But at the same time, he was completely devoted to being a good soldier. And up until the day he left, he was a good soldier. At the military hearing, his former weapons squad leader, a guy named Greg Leatherman, said the leadership used to do this thing sort of like fantasy football, like a mock draft. If you could form a squad from anyone in the company, who would you choose? Quote, and first pick, you know, Sergeant Bergdahl was going to be the first pick for everyone almost every time, he said. He was a great soldier. He did things like study the Ranger Handbook, which is something we were all supposed to do, but none of us actually did. Uh, you know, you look through it, you get some notes and say, yeah, I looked at it. That's Jason Fry. He was in Bo's platoon. They were friends. The Ranger Handbook is a pocket guide for soldiers. Oh, yes, Doom Guy. Techniques. 
And he would, you know, he'd come back, he'd highlight it, he'd look at it and study it. And the leadership saw that and they were like, wow, you know, this guy's trying. He, he cares about his job. Vote? He cares about what he's doing. Mm -hmm. And um, I think that's uh, that's significant as far as understanding Bo. No, he isn't a person high. who carelessly does something. Back then, Bo's goal was special forces. He joined the Army in 2008 and was assigned to the 1st Battalion of the 501st Infantry Regiment, Blackfoot Company. As an infantry soldier, oh, you it. are so far from special forces. Is it forces. free somewhere? You're a workhorse. You're the guys who get sent out to guard a traffic control point in the middle of nowhere Afghanistan. But Bo intended to be a faultless example of an infantryman. He volunteered for extra duty, took impeccable care of his weapon, helped other people Why with their so jobs hard right once now? he was done with Why? his. Shoved extra snacks on? in his pockets in case the other guys got hungry. He was fit. One of his former platoon mates told me he was a PT stud. PT is the often dreaded physical training soldiers have to do. He was what military people call squared away. Right place, right time. All right, Gaz, right what's your vote? Everybody agrees about that. The other thing people will say about Bo back then is that he was not your typical grunt. They can all describe Bo, but not one of them would say they totally got him or understood what made him tick. Shane Cross was friends with Bo also. They were in the same platoon. He said Bo wasn't isolated from the group. He just wasn't into the usual stuff. These guys played video games. Bo didn't. They talked about sex and women. Bo didn't. He'd say, I'm not into that kind of thing. He didn't want to, he didn't live the average, you know, Is guys still here? soldier lifestyle of drinking, you know, all night, all weekends and everything. He, he would always listen to classical music. He would read a lot. Mm -hmm. Would he ever joke around? Did he have a sense of humor? Uh -oh. Yeah, he had a sense of humor. Uh, Day of defeat. Sure, you know, in the, the community of teasing, joking around. Not to the extent that Too most of the soldiers will. Of course. You know, playing the grab ass stuff. Let's see if I can... He kept journals. Oh, he tried no. to study things. Pashto, for instance. And the quietness, it's just how Bo is. He's an introvert. But it was also intentional. The best way to create the least amount of friction is not a beat. You know, is one, don't run your mouth and act like a, you know, dumbass. Don't get in people's personal space. Don't go out of your way like a know-it-all. You know, if you're quiet, if you're off to the side, if you listen and if you watch, and if you help people, because, and you're able to help them because you're watching and you're seeing, you know, when somebody needs help, you know, that pays off, on, you know, as far as the team is concerned. He doesn't want to annoy anyone or create a problem. He's thinking about the best way he can contribute to the collective, how he can be most useful. He's like the perfect guest. Except that this strong philosopher nerd component he has, people might find it interesting or irritating. Does anyone Example, else want to vote? Bo took up smoking, anyone? sort of. A lot of privates smoked cigarettes, but he smoked a pipe. If the other guys were hunkered up in the window smoking cigarettes, he'd bring his pipe. So, you know, even though I don't smoke there, you know, I'm going out you know, with the, you know, with the guys because, you know, if you look at, you know, cig you know the whole cigarette ritual thing, it's kind of, you know, it's, it's a bonding ritual, you know, more or less. Like he was participating, but with an anthropological bent. Bo would probably be the first to admit that he had a bit of a tin ear for social interaction sometimes. Not with everyone, but with some. One time, Zach Barrow was talking about wanting to travel around Europe. All right, Richard, where can I play Doom? For all the reasons a young man would want to go to Amsterdam. Bo's contribution? He talked about Amsterdam's major exports and the financial stability of the Netherlands. Yeah. Well, vote. Yeah. You got to vote. He was that kind of dude. I mean, it was weird. Like, you would tell stories like that or talk about women, and he was like a fact driven dude. Bo was a fact driven dude. The problem was, he wasn't always great in the moment at sorting out what was fact and what wasn't. Bo's time in the army started out. Yeah, but I don't have it. He had specific ideas about leadership, about how you practice it. Can you compile and the source for me? In training at Fort Benning, Georgia, Bo found what he was looking for: a senior drill sergeant who was everything he felt like a military leader should be. My senior drill sergeant was an amazing, you know, sergeant. I would have followed him. Yeah, definitely would have followed him into battle. I would have had a problem with it because, you know, he was somebody that you could trust and you could certainly take pride in backing him because he was just that, you know, that type of a leader. But unfortunately, when I got out of basic, everything just went downhill from there. 
Bo sized up everyone he came into contact with in the Army. And while he has some nice things to say about the confidence of some of his platoon mates or a couple of his sergeants, as far as Bo is concerned, not one leader, especially the guys up the chain, held a candle to this senior drill sergeant. Like I told General Dahl, uh, my disillusionment wasn't like, it didn't start in Afghanistan. It basically, it snowballed from the moment I got to my unit and all these little things just Uh-oh. started ticking off and just started being logged back in my memory. A worrisome catalog began to compile. At first, just a comment here or there. When he got to his unit in Alaska, where the first of the 501st is based, someone suggested Bo lock up his stuff because otherwise he might get swiped. A bit of advice to a newcomer. But Bo thought, how am I supposed to go onto a battlefield if I can't even trust these guys here? All those years later, he remembered it and he told it to General Dahl. Then there was a comment by the command sergeant major, Ken Wolf. Prior to deployment, Wolf did a full formal inspection of the battalion. While he was at it, he explained to them what the mission would be in Afghanistan or at least what it wouldn't be. And I basically gave the same speech or the same spill to all 14 platoons, which was, hey, we're not going here to rape, kill, pillage, and burn. We're doing just the opposite of that. Mm -hmm. And I said, I know lots of you guys joined the Army to do that. And everybody in the organization, you know, found the humor in that. Can't even get the rookie 100%. Not he did not find the humor in that. Wolf had joked that he joined back in 83 to rape, kill, pillage, and burn also. But Bo, even if he understood it was intended as a joke, he did not think it was funny. He found it distressing. He told Dahl he was taken aback. In early 2009, Bo sent an email from Alaska to his family and friends. Quote, my deployment dates to Afghanistan have been set to the 9th or 10th of March, so the countdown has started. I'm looking forward to the next year of learning and challenges. In fact, Bo didn't end up deploying with the rest of his unit. He'd road marched in a pair of new boots trying to break them in and gotten a blister on his left foot that turned into a serious staph infection. He had to go to the hospital. So he stayed back on what's called Rear D, Rear Detachment. But almost everyone else shipped off to Paktika province, eastern Afghanistan. And when they landed, spring of 2009, was a turning point for U.S. forces there. The Taliban this is and the other gas anti-Afghan training. government this is groups gas pushed does. back into the country in a big way. There were Taliban shadow governors in 33 out of the country's 34 oh. provinces. Casualties among U.S. Oh, and coalition forces had spiked. By almost every measure, we were losing. President Obama had ordered a review of the war when he came into office that year. And by the end of March, in a speech, he declared the situation, quote, increasingly perilous, unquote. We've been focused as a country and as a military on Iraq. Now, he said, we'd be turning our attention back to Afghanistan. In the next year, we'd more than double our troop numbers there. To meet the surge, the Army was scrambling for recruits, issuing waivers to people who might not have qualified two years earlier. And units like the 1st of the 501st, Bo's Battalion, that had just done a 15-month tour in Iraq, were coming home, absorbing oh, no! troops, and turning around and heading back into war, this time to Afghanistan. Oof, saved it. The day after Obama made his increasingly perilous speech, Bo's Battalion officially began its mission in Afghanistan. And that mission was counterinsurgency, COIN for short. General David Petraeus had embraced the doctrine. In 2006, yes, I did it. Ten for a ten. Counterinsurgency manual for the army. He explained, "Coin means you're not just going to be fighting. Quote: Soldiers and Marines are expected to be nation builders as well as warriors." The idea of Coin in Afghanistan was to beat back the enemy, and at the same time train the Afghan security forces to take over the fight themselves. Yeah. Um.
Okay, let's see. Gotta switch over to that. No video of what? Of the actual game? So I didn't start it yet. Let's see, is this... Do I use my mouse or is it just keyboard? Let's start off easy for now. Let's see. Okay, this is not going to go well. Yeah, it's keyboard only. It's a little laggy. Let's jump. Is there a jump button? I hope I find all... I'm not going to find any of the secrets. It's been so long since I played this game. I don't even know. <laughs> How do I open doors? I feel like an idiot. There, all right, control. Hey, look, a guy. I'm gonna shoot that guy. Maybe. Yes, I killed him. Hey, look, there's a dead guy. Is that my friend? I hear someone. The normal game have kind of like a skating. It's almost like I'm on ice a little bit. Like when I lift up the keys, it's a little delayed. Can I shoot that imp from up there? How do I enable mouse look? I picked up shotgun shells, but I don't have a shotgun. Well, there's the exit, but I didn't, I didn't find the secret yet. Richard's going to be sad. Um, is it a hidden door? Where'd that guy come from? See the guy who was upstairs? I missed the secrets. Can I go back and get them? Do I have to go in this acid to get the secret? Oh, what's this over here? Got the shotgun. Um, hmm. Was that the secret? Did I just get it? That was one of them. There's another one somewhere. Oh, over here. But how do I? I don't know how to jump. Do I go through that window? 
No. Maybe over here. No secrets. Give me no secrets. That's not the secret right there. Not the window. Got it. Um, is it in this room? Broken wall between two green walls. Is it in this room? Oh, this one looks weird. There it is. I picked up the mega armor. That's only one of them? Is there more over here? No, that's the window I was looking at, right? I wish I had a jump. I'm totally jumping there. In the room with the shotgun, there's another one. Well, all these walls look pretty normal. Run from across the acid room to get on an elevator. Oh, so there's no way that I can get it then. It's already too late. Shift is run. It was only supposed to take me 30 seconds, and it took me 6. I'm not very good. I am here. Whoa. Do you use WASD? And then Shift and Control? I guess that makes it a little bit easier. I don't know which controls I like better. out of five. Do the cheat codes still work in this? Because I know those. More shotguns. Why doesn't it let you pick that up? It's right there. Or is it because I already have full?
let's see. This is the red door. I have the red key. Got him. This looks like a secret. Where am I? Was that the secret? Was I gonna go there anyways? Go down. Go across. I go in there. Oh, the chainsaw. Watch out for that poison. There is a secret level you can find the entrance to. Is this the exit? No. It didn't say exit. Why would I think that that was the exit? Oh, I just went in a giant circle. Oh, this is the exit. Oh my goodness. Why can I not go in there? What? I only killed 75% of people? Now I'm there. More shotgun stuff. That's the door I just came out of. I bet you it's not good to go in that place. You probably die if you fall in there. Whoa. Man, I am really glad that we have mouse look nowadays. Ooh, look at that glowing orb with a face in it. That looks spooky. I like that they show you that there's, you know, hey, there's going to be some stuff that you don't even know how to get to. You should try and figure out how to get to it. Whoa, mister. He just blew himself up. Hey, buddy. I 
can't aim down. How am I supposed to shoot that guy? Does this game have reloading? Like, obviously I have to cock the shotgun, but with other guns. Or is it literally you just keep playing until... You're out of ammo. Whoa. You know what I just realized? There's no stra- is there strafing? Strafing would make this easier, I think. What's down here? I saw a little... Oh, is it just in case you fall down? Oh, no. There is the whole platform. Oh, there's a dude up there. See, if I had a strafe key, hold alt. No, that didn't work. At least not in this version. Control? Nope. Tab? Yeah, tab works. See escape options. Oh man, no Q and E. Oh, there it is. I don't have enough hands to play this stupid game. I bet you, you eventually get used to it though, don't you? Okay, so the lights went out. I think I got everything. Got the blue key card. I know how to strafe now. Let's see. What else is going on in the world of Doom? Where was the blue door? I don't remember seeing one. It's the room with the guy in it. Where is he? There he is. I can't even see him. I'm not even gonna try that guy. He's tricksy. There's that cool head again. Let's, let's show me the blue door in the map. Oh, whoa. The map actually makes you move. Okay, so this is back to the beginning. Was there a blue door over here that I missed? Top of my shotgun ammo. There is the blue door over here. I don't even think I went over here to when we started. A lot of guys out there. Can I hit him from this distance? Oh, shnikes. I love their snarl noise. Yeah, snarl noise.
Well, I didn't figure out how to get the glowing head. Then again, I'm not really trying to hit control on every single wall. Uh, no, I'm not really good at secrets. I don't know if you've realized this. Not a secret kind of guy. One of those glowing heads again. So what do those glowing heads even do? Are they awesome? Hitting me. I think it's kind of funny that you don't even have to be aiming at the guy. As long as you're he's in the center of your screen, you'll hit him. Two hundred percent health. Nice. Oh, hey, buddy. So I'm on Mars, right? was what? Sound like you asked a question. Oh, yeah. I'm on Mars, right? Look at all these keys. So if you're a speedrunner, can you get up there without getting all the keys? There's the yellow key, but I feel like I'm going to die if I go over there. Oh, can I get hazard suits? So now I can go in radiation. Uh oh. Ouch. 
chain gun, and I found. Hello, tickle me, tickle. What is it? Tickle Melbos, tickle elbows. That's good. You know. Yes, I am a noob. Total noob. I'll learn how to read one a day one of these days. Mom? Nah, she's not that hot. She's like old and stuff. Hey look, there's something to press. Let's press it. She's single? No. Yes. My mustache? Yes. Walrus in a closet. Hate mazes. Hmm. See ya. Thanks for stopping by.
Oh, there's a map. Who to thunk it? Then I go left. Then I go like over here. Then I go over here. Oh, where am I? Where am I trying to go? So big yellow doors. This kind of looks like a dead end, but I feel like I need to do more inside of the the blue door. Missed a door in the maze. Seriously, what do the yellow lines mean? All these goodies. Getting secrets? Nope. Make me run through acid. Man, what if I didn't have any health? There's bad guys everywhere. Whoa, that was close. interesting.
Back to the start. Bad guy. Oh, I knew that was going to be a bad idea. Oops. Farts. I don't like this room. It's too dark. I'm just gonna go for the exit. Did I win yet? One, two, three. So are there are three more levels. Or is that just like the first episode? I forget how this works. But it's the last place of this episode. Or of the whole game. Yeah. 
so what would this be considered like that I'm currently playing? Oh, Schnakies. This isn't going to be good, is it? Yeah, stay moving. Duck and weave, duck and weave. Chain reaction. Episode 1, Map 6. There's probably secrets in that acid. They always want you to go into acid to find secrets. Over here, I don't remember. I don't think so. I don't think there's any doors in this room. This room sucks. There's blue stuff on the walls. All right, back to the start. Like. Use my little map. Let's see if I can suss this out. Alright, what's directly in front of me right now? Oh, look! <laughs> A door! Look at that, a blue door. Mazes. Is that where I came in? I think it is.
Did I find a secret? Computer area map. Oh yeah, look at that. Now I can see everything. What the... It doesn't show you where switches are though, does it? Yeah, Gray is a place I haven't been, but uh, does it show si switches? No switch showing, okay. moved off of my strafe keys. Oh, there's an invisible dude. Not cool, invisible dude. Now where to? Can I run over this acid and not die? 
Or is that too high for me to get up onto? Let's find out. All right. bad thing in here, I can hear it. It's an invisible thing. The shotgun's not fast enough. I'm hurt. I'm hurting. Hurting bad. 40% health. Opening doors was not a good idea. I'm caught on something. What is going on? I made it! Do they know what par means? Three minute par? If you never played this? Well, yeah, you could probably hit par if you were, um, um, if once you know the map, and I'm saying if you played it for the very first time, getting par would probably be very hard. Probably gonna die soon, I bet ya. Yeah. Do you have lives in this or once you die is it over? Invisible things. It's like the best usage of that ever. I need to find some health. Things are shooting me.
Where's all the health? Normally there's a bunch of health. There's a health. There's that face thing. I've gone through this whole game and I never got one of those face things once. Probably because they always want you to go in acid to get it. And I'm not willing. Was Doom the original, like, jump scare with you opening a door and those guys popping out? Wolfenstein. Oh, so there's the blue key card. I can see it. I just gotta figure out how to get to it. So there's the map. So it's that little thing right there, okay. Right there. I see it again. Ooh, a suit. Is there a Coco Demon out there? I thought I saw it. Nope. It's wherever that thing is. Partial invincibility. Was I already up here? Why does this feel familiar? Hmm. I totally cheated. I use the map to find the blue key. Now, how do I get back to that blue door I saw earlier? There's the yellow door. But where was the blue one? Nailed them right in the face.
Ooh, did I just get the rocket launcher? Uh oh. That's bad news bears. That's gonna kill me. Oh, there's the blue door. Yeah, I know. I don't, I'm going to try not to blow myself up with the rocket, so I'm not even going to use it right now. Because I know that'll be the death of me. That, is there a special can need for this? Why is it not opening? Man. It must be a switch or something I gotta hit. <laughs> oh, look, a switch. <laughs> 